There are conversations in life that need to be had face to face. No matter the generation of those involved, nor if the convenience is better through technology, there are conversations that if they are had over the phone or via text message or email, they lose importance and at times they lose respect. Famously, rom-com movies have moments where someone has broken up with another person over the phone or via post-it note, and immediately the initiator of that breakup loses all respect in the eyes of the viewer because how could they have that conversation without being face-to-face? -face? Most of these in-person conversations would be, of course, easier to have without facing the person, but that's exactly why it must be done. Personal relationships are enhanced when taken seriously enough to be face-to-face, -face, or panim el panim, as we see in Kitisa. In chapter 33 of our Parsha, we hear that God would speak to Moshe, panim el panim, like a person would speak to their neighbor. God and Moshe were clearly close, friendly, and had respect for one another. And God, as parent, supervisor, mentoring figure, knew to have these conversations with Moshe in real life. Of course, quote, in person does not mean the same thing when we're dealing with God. But you understand the idea, not over the phone or via email, but rather over lunch or in an in-person meeting. Moshe and God have spent quite a bit of time on a mountain, understanding the laws set before the people and the relationship they would have together to lead and direct B'nai Israel. A few chapters before this idea of panim el panim is introduced to us as this relationship advice, we learn, After speaking with him, Moshe, on Mount Sinai, God gave Moshe the two tablets of the pact, stone tablets inscribed with the finger of God. God spoke with Ito Moshe, not at or to, but with. Again, this is before we learn of Panim El Panim, but it is clear to us that God understands the relationship as one that is inclu inclusive, reciprocal, and respectful one to the other. Rashi teaches that the use of Ito, of with him, teaches us that Moshe first heard the laws from the mouth of God and that the Midrash teaches in Shemot Rabbah that then they both again repeated each halakha, each law or commandment together. The laws were written by the finger of God, which is a bizarre thing to think about, but again, relational and personal. And so we would think that God would know the laws. However, in a deep and invested relationship, even when we know something, we come to the table with someone we love to learn, to grow, and to even repeat knowledge to help with common understanding. Talia, in some ways, your bat mitzvah could have been 10 years ago when you were already growing up in a family with an older sibling and parents and grandparents and extended family who are all invested in your learning. You knew so much of what you did today before today. However, we wait for our learners to be ready before we expect them to teach us or present to us. So that not only can you acquire skills at your own pace, but so that we can move from teacher to student of yours as you learn to navigate and explore your own interests and understandings. You have taught us today through your mastery of davening, your brilliant Devar Torah, and as a poised young woman navigating her own Jewish path. Like Moshe, you are surrounded by teachers and mentors and family members who are eager to sit around the table with you as our teacher and partner in learning. A few verses after the phrase panim el panim is first used to describe God's style of teaching and mentorship, Moshe requests to behold God's presence. One might ask, well, didn't that already happen if they were panim el panim? Great question, and it seems that the first panim el panim meant an informal style of relationship with intentionality and love and respect. But still, 
metaphorically, via the phone or text message rather than an in-person conversation. The verses from one, uh, from one use of the phrase to the next have that root, pene, used at least once in each verse, showing a gradual growth and closeness to the actual in-person meeting between Moshe and God. God finally shares rules with Moshe of how he might be in physical view of God's presence, but only the back, not the face of God, not God's panim. I will take my hand away, and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Rabbi David Wolpe, who was the rabbi at my bat mitzvah a few years ago today, shares that perhaps the message is that we grow gradually more intimate with God as we get older. That it is, in some sense, our task in life to see God truly according to our capacity. Some of us see God's face in the eyes of, who we of whom we love. Others find it in the wonders of nature. Some see God in sacred books or in ritual practices or in a mysterious but intense inner light. At different times in our lives, all of these manifestations of God's face may appear to us. Three verses before the end of our Torah, we read, Velo kam navi od be Israel kemoshe. Never again was there a teacher, a prophet, in Israel like Moshe. Asher yad o Hashem panim el panim, who knew God face to face. Panim el panim is about respect. It is the same word, the same plane, the same aspect of one's physical being shared to show that in respectful relationship, we must each show up. It doesn't matter the age difference, the skills difference, the intelligence difference, the professional difference. It matters that two people can respect one another enough to share deeply and closely and intimately and with curiosity. I still believe in 2024 that the best way to have someone's full attention and understand them fully is by speaking face to face. But two people, as we see with Moshe and God, can also be face to face, and at times, that might lead to not understanding or hearing one another. Talia, working with you and learning with you always felt like this panim el panim relationship. You did not just say, yeah, that's good, or agree with each edit or lesson that I had. You are strong and thoughtful and mature, and a leader and working with you allowed me to become a student and see you panim el panim, and to share Torah together. In the Gemara and Nedarim, Rabbi Yochanan said, initially Moshe would study Torah and forget it, until it was given to him as a gift as it stated, God gave it to Moses when God concluded speaking with him. Once the Torah was given to Moshe as a gift, it became his, and he was able to remember it. Talia, you are receiving Torah today as a gift, a gift that you had to show up and receive, a gift that you had to want to receive, a gift that you had to be in relationship to receive. And hopefully that means that this is a gift that you make your own and continue re-gifting and teaching for many years to come. As part of this gift of Torah, there's a little surprise. Do you want to guess what it is? <laughs> your mom and aunt and I have one final moment of song to share with you. Was that your guess? <laughs> so thank you for receiving the gift of Torah so we can all learn from you, Panim El Panim.